So Andrew's next question and final in this podcast. Without trying to psychoanalyze these figures, Blavatsky and Crowley, how much of their upbringing played a part in their future in the esoteric? And my reply to that is, well, I can say that I have not read any biographies about Blavatsky, so I do not know much about her childhood directly, though I have read multiple biographies of Crowley, I in the Triangle by Rigardi and Perturavo by Kaczynski, as well as Crowley's own autobiography, The Confessions. It is certainly formative for young Blavatsky that her mother, writing under the pen name Genida Arve, Arva, R V A, Arva, translated Edward Bulwer Lytton from English to Russian, although these likely did not include the novel Vril, The Power of the Coming Race, which was first published anonymously in 1871. Likewise, it was undoubtedly formative for young Crowley that he was raised in the strict, exclusive sect of the Plymouth Brethren community for the first 11 years of his life, until his father died, and that, according to him, his mother nicknamed him the Great Beast at a very young age. Both these occult luminaries rebelled against what they felt was authoritarian Christianity, Crowley adopting the moniker Two Megatherion as it totaled 666 in Greek gematria, and Blavatsky publishing the Lucifer magazine in London from 1887. Both had tumultuous love lives, Blavatsky being at one point a polygamist, simultaneously married to two men, but claiming to have remained a lifelong virgin. And Crowley's well-publicized bisexuality with dozens of partners both during and between his two marriages earning him being slandered as the wickedest man alive. Both were cremated following their deaths, and if they'd ever met, I imagine both of them would have fought with each other. <laughs>